Hey, Sean, it's Men's Health. Hey, what's up? Men's Health. Come on in. You must be here to see my gym and fridge. All right, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, let's check out the fridge. Let's see, let's see. What staples do you always have in your fridge? I'd say the staples for me are fresh fruit. I love having fruit around. Um, I, don't know, I think I get a bit of a sweet tooth, so this kind of handles that without having a candy bar or something. <laughs> but I also do a lot of smoothies, so I got fresh berries, I got blueberries. Not at all. How has your diet changed over the years? I feel like I've gotten healthier over time. I really didn't pay attention to what I ate when I was younger. And to be honest, I'd actually kind of go on diets after the Olympics because um, <laughs> Because they'd always ask me to take my shirt off for magazine shoots and stuff, and I'd be like, I, I'm so pale. I snowboard, <laughs> just covered in the mountains. Uh, but anyway, so now that I'm a bit older, I really like kind of focus in on what makes me feel the best. What would we never see in the fridge? I think one thing you'll never really find in my fridge is dairy, like milk. My girlfriend can't do dairy or gluten, and so it kind of like switched me over to having, you know, alternatives for cereal and stuff like that. So we have like almond milk, oat milk, but I kind of prefer it now. It's, I don't know, I just like it. What was your diet like training for the Olympics? It was pretty straightforward. I mean, I would just eat pretty light in the mornings just because my job requires me to like fly in the air. So having a huge burrito or something doesn't really work with that. I will say that before I won the gold in Korea, my breakfast was chocolate cake. Um, it was my buddy's birthday, and he's like, well, I, I mean, I got the cake. You want to have some? <laughs> I was like, sure. <laughs> so that's not the norm, but yeah. I don't know. We're snowboarders. We kind of eat whatever. We take the chairlift. It's a, it's a more relaxed sport. Usually before I compete, yeah, it's just something really light. Oatmeal or I'll put like bars in my pockets, something like that. What do you eat after the gym? Post-workout, I usually just go find a salad somewhere, you know, with rice and veggies and something like that. What's your favorite food from childhood? My favorite thing from my childhood that I still eat on occasion would be Panda Express. There's something about passing it at the airport, it just starts calling to me. And I see that glowing orange nuclear chicken there and I'm like, ah, that looks, that looks pretty good. I might have to go for a scoop. Which Olympic athlete, living or dead, would you love to have a meal with? Hmm. I think Kobe Bryant. I never got a chance to have a meal with him. I think he's a legend, so yeah, Kobe for sure. Do you cook? Oh, I'm an okay cook. I started cooking a lot during the pandemic. Yeah, I can make a few dishes, but I'd say my favorite is any type of like Mexican food, tacos or burritos, something like that. Actually, I actually have my favorite um, tortillas here. This is grain-free tortillas. I still buy these even though I can eat the normal ones. They're so good. They got this like sort of chewy, crunchy like texture to them. But um, yeah, anything anything Mexican is like, it's my favorite. What do you eat for breakfast? I used to just pile it on and nowadays I just do like a, a smoothie. I, I do this protein mix. It's called cachava. It's really great and it's uh, plant-based, which normally like a lot of the Plant-based proteins, they just made my stomach like churn, and this one's great. I don't have that at all, so I really love this. And then I mix it with like oatmeal, avocado, banana, some like chia seeds and things, and then a little almond butter and almond milk. And then I just like kind of take it with me for the day. Do you drink coffee? I don't really drink coffee. I had a spell for a little while where I did, and it just like, I would crash during the day. I think things affect me, so when I take a little sip of caffeine, I'm like off to the races. Like. But I do a little bit of tea nowadays. I'll do like English breakfast. What's your go-to protein? It used to be chicken. I love having chicken, but um, nowadays I do a lot of tofu, things like that. What are your favorite comfort foods? I mean, I love pizza. I love having pasta and pizza. Um, I don't really see it as a bad thing though. Like, I don't, I don't know, it's just bread and cheese and oil and grease. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> see, if you tell yourself it's okay, then it's okay. You've snowboarded all over the world. Which are your favorite countries for eating? Oh my God. I mean, the food in Japan, ramen and the sushi, and you know, they make these curry dishes. Um, so I love the food in Japan. And then I would say New Zealand. 
you know what I mean? We ever get like a bottle of wine, and it's like, oh, from New Zealand, or they're like, oh, this lamb's from New Zealand. I've been there, you see the vineyards, you can see, it's just like this beautiful country, and the food there is just incredible. So uh, I would say New Zealand, and you don't even have to try to be healthy, it's just like, it just is, you know? The, the eggs are coming from the hen house right there, like everything, you know, in the U.S. became very popular, like, oh, farm to table, and they're like, what? <laughs> what is that? Like, oh, well, no, we got a farm and then we bring it to the table to cook it. And they're like, this is how we do it here. So uh, I love New Zealand. I love the food. What do you order at the bar? Currently, I'm ordering soda water with lime. <laughs> I go on spurts of like not drinking. I don't know. I've always had this like delicate balance with alcohol just because I enjoy it. But then I have to compete and my job, I'm flipping and spinning in the air. So you can't really be hung over any of those things and then add travel and add press interviews and things. And it just became too much at the time. But if I was going to have a drink, it would be a, maybe like a spicy margarita or, or a Moscow mule or something. Mm. But I don't, so. But if I were. <laughs> what are you ordering at a diner? Any type of like chicken and waffles, like fried chicken. <laughs> it's like definitely my go-to. What's your burrito order? Ooh, burrito order. Oh my God. I'm the guy that's just trying to fit everything in the burrito. Like they, they have to use two tortillas to wrap it. I do like fajita peppers. I go with black beans, brown rice, avocado. And then I dance between whether I want chicken or steak or if they have a kind of plant-based option, I'll go with that. But yeah, like the impossible meat or beyond meat. All right, that was my fridge. Uh, let's start the workout. All right, let's see how you work out. So here we are, I'm traveling right now, so I'm just gonna show you like a little bit of a light workout that I do at the house while I'm on the road. I start usually with the foam roller, it just like loosens up my back and um, makes it easier for me to be interviewed. How has your workout changed over time? I started doing it. <laughs> I remember talking about it in the press when I was younger, like, oh yeah, yeah, working out. <laughs> like I just didn't do it. You know, I was like 15 and I was still winning the event, so I didn't really feel like I needed to have a crazy regiment. But I think around 2014 Olympics, I started actually getting into it and, and working out. So after that, it then started to change slightly over the years because I found that I needed to be more flexible and light than to be bulky and have like um, kind of muscle mass. How often do you snowboard now? I snowboard quite a bit now, um, I, just as much as before, but just in a different way. You know, that's the fun part. I always joke about having gone to every mountain you can think of, but I only know the run that takes you to the half pipe. <laughs> so like, now in retirement, I wanna go back and ride all the runs uh, that I never got to, so. What was it like to have your own private half pipe? That was wild. It, it was more out of necessity. I mean, I, I couldn't really go to the local resort anymore. There's you know, people waiting at the chairlift to try to get on the chair with me and then, you know, trying to talk to me and like take selfies while I did my airs at the half pipe. I, it was flattering to have that much attention, but it definitely caused for like a really tough environment to train. And so when we built this half pipe, I was just had this like insane setup all to myself and we got a lot done. And to this day, people still you know, they still talk about it. Like, is it still out there? It's like this mythical thing. Like, is it still there? <laughs> People, and I, I love it. It's the first time I, I really was able to invent new tricks for the sport. I'd always just kind of done what everyone else, else was doing, but try to do it better. And this time I got to just like create, which was fun. How did you train for the Olympics? A lot of it got done on the mountain. I would say snowboarding is kind of a sport where, yeah, it's nice to have the strength in the gym and it's nice to be able to have a routine, but a lot gets done on the mountain. You need the mental aspect just as much as you need the strength, almost more, I would say. So I would go and usually ride probably four or five days in a row and then take a few days off to just recover. And then the nice part about being in the mountains is to recover. You know, there's always like a lake or a stream or something nearby for a cold plunge. So just go jump in the cold water and like thaw. Is training your core important for snowboarding? Speaking of core, uh, <laughs> I think there's a bunch of moves for me that like keep my core strength up. But I'd say everything has to do with kind of like this planted rotational sort of thing. It's like tennis or golf. Like you have to have your feet planted and then you, you oh, did you hear that? That was amazing. 
oh, it was the roller got me all. <laughs> so I retired. <laughs> your feet are planted, so you have to just, everything comes from here and you swing your arms and it's all rotational. So I felt like anytime I was at the gym and I could grab one of those like pulling machines, um, I would I would start with like, you know, kind of like a, a level plane and then I go come from the top and then from below and then anything like with a medicine ball where I could come you know, side to side or throw it at a friend, something like that. But I think those were the best workouts. How did you come up with the double McTwist? The double McTwist was something kind of out of necessity. I was at a competition and I was favorited to win and, and a competitor of mine had this miracle run and beat me and I was just like, how did this happen? I was like, I have to, I have to pull out the big guns. I have to pull out every stop. And, and so it was maybe a few days after that, I was um, snowboarding in Utah and I just said now or never. Um, the issue was, is that I kept hitting my face every time I did the trick. Cause it was a, it was a double make twist 1080. And the way you come in for that is sort of like your face coming toward the wall. And then you pull away as you go to land and if I came up short, I would just clip my face every time. It was really awful. And I thought, well, it's a little scarier to spin further, but at least this way, when I come in to land, my back would be facing the wall, not my face. And so I remember taking off, throwing it, and it just flipped around and landed itself. It was, so, it was just like, like it was meant to be that trick. And I just had this feeling like, Ooh. Like I was so excited, like I had a new, you know, upgraded this new level, like I had unlocked this secret and it just was like the perfect trick. How many bones have you broken? I've broken, let's see, one, two, three maybe? No, four, four. Four is pretty good, I would say. I feel like I, I really made a career out of landing on my feet, <laughs> so <laughs> I feel pretty lucky. And I think I'm pretty resilient. So every time I took a crash, I was able to kind of bounce back. Four broken bones, I'd say. And three of them were the one incident. It was a broken hand, broken foot, and I fractured my skull. I was 11 years old. Who are your idols growing up? My idols for sure, Tony Hawk. I mean, he lived in my community, which was so cool. I would see him at the local skate park. So I got to kind of like meet my hero and then later become friends with him. There was a guy, this guy, his name was Damian Sanders. <laughs> and he had a black mohawk and he had shaved his teeth to look like fangs, like a vampire. <laughs> I was like, that guy is so cool. And I remember he would come through the park and just do these huge layout backflips. Remember this is like the eighties in snowboarding. So this was like a wild time, but I remember like Damian Sanders is so cool. <laughs> I just, it was a crazy time, but definitely those, those athletes were um, inspiring to me. And then later on in life, I would say Andre Agassi. I just love that he not only, you know, did his sport, but he did it in a style. Like he, he had his own look. I remember him sitting in the desert on his Lamborghini, like, you know, doing his photo shoots and stuff. And, you know, and even Mike Tyson, you know, he'd come out and like win in a certain style, Muhammad Ali. I think Muhammad Ali was probably one of the first outside of my sport. I remember picking up a book and it was like a really, it was honestly, it was the thinnest book in the library because I had to do a report on it. <laughs> like, this is the thinnest one, I'll read this. And it was a book about him and, and I just like was infatuated with him afterward. Yeah, big personality. So. Do you do any weird exercises in the gym? All right, kids, that's what we do at home. Whoa, what's that good for? Anything I can like, keep my mind doing something while balancing was usually the ticket. Cause you imagine snowboarding, you're crossing the half pipe and you're hitting bumps and chunks of snow and stuff like that. But your mind's gotta be focused on the wall and the trick ahead. So anything where I'm like, you know, I'm working my arms right now, but I'm still like working my core and balancing. So stuff like this was always my favorite. What other sports do you do? I love mountain biking. It's like my favorite thing to do when I'm when I'm at home, I tried to go to you know these Soul Cycle classes and things. It was cool, but I just liked the idea of you know going somewhere. I could see you know the trees and the views and things like that like I'm out in nature. So I, I love mountain biking. Is there an exercise you hate? I definitely I can't stand running. Can't do. I barely want to walk. 
and I'm in New York, I'm like, it's the worst. Like, it's just a few blocks. Anybody from New York that tells you it's just a few blocks, it's not, that's so far. And they have things here, avenues are even longer. Yeah, I don't know, something about running is just like the pounding on my knees and my back, and every step I take, I can't help but think like, I have to take this step to get back to where I started from, <laughs> so it's just not my jam. Yeah, let's not talk about it. It's just not even, <laughs> just picturing it, it was causing me <laughs> angst. Have you tried any other sports? I did a few boxing classes and it kind of freaked me out because <laughs> I really liked it. And I was like, oh man, am I gonna be that guy now that like just <laughs> builds an octagon at the house and starts <laughs> trying to bring the guests over and fight them? At least that's where my head went. <laughs> I know there's something about it because you start to, there's like a muscle memory and a technique. No, you have to pivot your foot or you have to do this. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm gonna get really into this. <laughs> and I don't have time right now. So yeah, I did a little bit of boxing. I love, I mentioned mountain biking, surfing, skateboarding. I mean, I do a lot of things that are active, but not necessarily in the gym. But my God, if you're gonna go skate for like three or four hours, it's just all leg. I mean, what a great workout and you had fun doing it. What are your current fitness goals? I think current fitness goals would just to be to kind of like maintain, you know, I'm, I've recently retired. So a lot of the athletes that I spoke to, they're like two things. Don't try to fill the void of your sport with something new right away. Be kind of comfortable in that nothingness for a bit, you know, enjoy your time off because you will find something new. Um, and the second thing was do not stop working out. They're like the, the comeback and trying to get back into shape is extremely hard, especially as you get older. So I think for me, it's just kind of gracefully, hopefully maintaining a certain level of fitness as I get older. How do you keep your mind fit? I've been to like a bunch of Tony Robbins seminars and those really changed a lot for me. It's submersive, you know, you're there for multiple days and you can't escape these stories you've been telling yourself and then you come back and it's like a really amazing experience to just like sink into it and be with your own thoughts and come to realizations about things through his sort of teachings. And then there's a guy named Eckhart Tolle. Something about the way he talks, like if you go check out his stuff online, he's got this really, I don't know, he might be Austrian or German, but he talks that he's got this very calm talk, the way he, there were two ducks on the lake, and then one duck came to the other duck and started flapping his wings. And, and it's, it's amazing to sleep to. <laughs> so I just like, I put it on, he starts talking about the ducks and the lake and this stuff. And I feel like I'm getting a little bit of like, a break from the way I've been thinking about the world and then and then I can kind of fall asleep to it and then hopefully my subconscious is getting a little. What music do you listen to when you work out? I put on like old hip hop. I can't, I hate saying that it's old. It's ludicrous old. I just like ludicrous, Jay-Z, like black album. We got DMX, <sighs> he gonna give it to you. Yeah, I don't know. It's just any old hip hop because it just it, everything's just kind of hitting. Old Outkast, all that stuff. All right, Sean. Time for rapid fire questions. <laughs> Workout time: 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. 7 a.m. Squat or deadlift? Uh, squat. Favorite song on your playlist? Bad Boys. <laughs> CrossFit. Yay or nay? So I'm still hearing Bad Boys in my head. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, what? CrossFit. Yay or nay? Nay. <laughs> Pull ups or chin ups? Uh. Pull-ups. Dumbbells or kettlebells? Dumbbells? Run on a treadmill or the great outdoors? Neither. <laughs> I can't stand running. Cardio or weights? Cardio. Big legs or big arms? Ooh, uh, for me it's leg, I think. Biggest compliment? Jacked, ripped, swole, cut? we we'll go with shredded. <sighs> if you could work out with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh my God, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's so easy. Just pumping. He'd be like, Sean, keep calling, keep calling. <laughs> okay, Artie, couple more. <laughs> All right, that was my fridge and a little bit of my workout. Uh, time to get on with my day. So thanks for coming through.